Section 3.4, multipole expansion. Section 3.4.1, approximate potentials at large distances. Uh, hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. Um, we're covering section 3.4 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. Thumbs up and share if you appreciate what I'm doing. And as always, questions can go in a video response or the comments below. Let's get started. So uh, if you're very far away from a collection of charges, um, then you can, you can assume that the charges behave like the net charge, like a point charge with equivalent, you know, Q of the net charge. And you, you should be pretty close in your assumption. And in fact, uh, early on in, in, in the last chapter, we, we actually checked the solutions to lots of the problems, just checking to see if they behave like a collection of, uh, just like a single point charge. Um, but that's not always true. And so let's look at example 10. Example 10 is a physical dipole, it's a real dipole. We're going to talk about pure dipoles in a minute and what they mean and how they work. So um, basically what you have is you have two charges, you have plus Q and you have minus Q and they're separated by distance S and then over here is the point that we're interested in, P. And let me get out a straight edge, these are long lines and to not to do so well along the lines. So we have our two vectors pointing from these two P. Do, 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 do. That is the R of the positive one. That's a vector. And that is, do, 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 do. and I screwed it up anyway, the R of the negative one. And we have some angle theta. This is theta. And this is, of course, pi minus theta on the bottom there. So what we do next is we write out, using superposition, the equation that describes the potential at this point P. So V of P is just equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over R plus minus Q over R minus. It's easy peasy. Uh, let's remind ourselves that uh, this, this vector is called R. It's the position vector for where P is. The origin obviously is right here. And this curly R is the vector from the charges themselves to the point. Okay. So um, how long is the curly R? Notice there's a slight difference between them two, um, especially when P is not exactly perpendicular to the, the two particles. So we can rewrite, um, using the law of cosines, we can rewrite that uh, r plus squared is equal to well, r squared plus s over 2 squared, a half of s, plus uh, minus 2 um, rs over 2 cosine of theta. And these twos cancel, so it's just rs cosine theta. And for the negative direction, we're going to get r squared plus s over 2 squared um, minus rs cosine of pi minus theta, which if you do your trigonometric, trigonometric identities properly, you're going to get plus rs cosine of theta. Okay. So r squared plus s over 2 squared. Okay, a lot of cosines. Um, so the let's do the r plus 1 here. r plus is equal to, let's take out a factor of r squared here. So r squared times 1 plus s squared over 4 r squared minus s over r cos theta, and then take the square root of that. So we get r times 1 plus s over 4 r, so these are squares by the way, minus s over r cos theta to the 1 half. And the inversion of that, so 1 over r plus, which is from this equation up here, is going to be 1 over r times 1 plus s squared over 4 r squared minus s over r cos theta 
the negative 1 over half. Okay, at this point he uses a polynomial expansion, which if it's not fresh in your mind from your mathematics course, I'm going to write out for you. So when you have the case, you have like 1 plus x to the nth power. It doesn't matter what n is, it doesn't matter what x is, as long as x is between 1 and negative 1, which in this case, these two terms, well, s is small, r is large, so both of these should be should, shouldn't cause a problem for making a huge second factor, right? Well, that's just equal to 1 plus n times x plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 factorial times x squared plus, well, you probably get the picture, all over 3 factorial of x cubed and so on. That's the binomial expansion. Let me write that out for you so you can look it up. You'll see this series or um, it's, it's one of the basic power series. Probably should show up when you study power series. So we're going to take this bit and rewrite it, rewrite at least the first two terms from here. So we get equals to 1 over r. So we get 1. So we have a negative 1 half times these terms. All these guys get negative 1 half times those. So we get um, actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this term. We're not going to use that term anymore. So negative of a negative is a positive because that's negative. So we get s over r cos theta. And that is the binomial expansion. The first two terms of the binomial expansion of that. And our mathematics friends are probably going to be saying, you can't just do that. And well, we're physicists and we get to approximate, so we're going to approximate by dropping that term and we're going to approximate by ignoring the rest of the terms of the binomial expansion. Don't worry, it's going to make sense. Okay, for our r minus, and I ran out of room here, so 1 over r minus is equal to 1 over r, 1 minus s over 2 r cos theta. Minus because this, t this is a plus sign and we're going to have a negative 1 half and so it's going to be negative a positive, which is negative. Okay. All right, let me draw some boxes around those guys. So, ah, I'll tell you what it is first. 1 over r plus, curly r plus, is this. And 1 over r minus is that. Okay. So 1 over r plus minus 1 over r minus. New piece of paper. So we have... 1 over curly r plus minus 1 over curly r minus equals 2. 1 over r times um, 1 plus 1 half s over r cos theta minus 1 over r 1 minus s over 2 r cos theta. So we distribute the 1 over r's, we get this minus that, so no 1 over r's left this plus that, so we get two of those, we get s over r cos theta is the difference between the two. We plug that into the original formula that we had for the potential, and we get the potential at point p is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q times s over r cos theta. s over r, I'm missing an r, yeah, where'd my R go? Oh, ha! This one over R has to distribute as well, so it's one over R squared. There we go. QS over R squared cos theta. This is the potential that we get for approximating um, some things, which, you know, if, if you look at the approximations we took, you, you can probably convince yourself that they were wise. But uh, we call this the potential of the of a dipole and similarly so a dipole this is a monopole you just have a charge mono means one a dipole is you have two charges plus and minus quadrupole is four charges and an octopole is plus 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 minus 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 okay 
and you can convince yourself that when you had a monopole, which is basically a point charge, the potential decreased by one over r. For the dipole, one over r squared. This one's actually one over r cubed. And for an octopole, it's one over r to the fourth. Hope you had fun. Thanks, bye.